we're back with another exciting adventure in the world of statics. We're going to do some dot product examples. I'm going to very quickly, and I promise very quickly, give you the definition of dot product just as a refresher. And, you know, you can always skip ahead to you see the picture of a wrench. That's where I'm going to start the example. So um, if you just don't want to listen to this part. If I have two vectors, we'll call that one A, and we'll call this one B, and there is some angle theta between them. Um, I say that the dot product of A, and I need to put those, don't I, just to be consistent, A dot B is by definition A, B, where those are the magnitudes A and B times the cosine of theta, where theta is between zero in 180 degrees, and it represents the smallest angle between those vectors. It's not, it's not that angle. Okay. The result, if you look at this, A and B are scalars, cosine theta is a scalar, the result is a scalar. Um, the units will become whatever the units you know, of A and B are multiplied together. Um, because a, b, and cosine of theta are all scalar quantities, you can do most scalar math rules, distributive, commutative, things like that. The order in which you process these um, doesn't matter. You can kind of rearrange things at will, unlike normal vector math where the order is huge. Okay? Um, what do we use this for? The most common, absolutely most common thing which we will be using this for in this class, and we will use it over and over and over again, is we will project a, a vector along another vector. Okay? Um, if nothing else, you need to... Uh, Remember this, I've seen too many students. We'll get a big complex problem, it's a 3D problem, we're trying to figure things out, and there'll be a vector off at some angle, and step one is to project that vector onto an axis, and the students sit there, scratch their head, heads, and miss the question on the test. Don't do that, okay? Um, Project. When I say project, you say dot product. I mean, bam, it's just, it, that needs to be just crammed into your head. I say project, you say, no, no, don't, don't, don't just think it, say it. I say project, you say dot product, right? Every single time. It just, bam, automatically. When the word, if you see the word project on this, on a test or on a homework problem, or you see that you have to do a projection, bang, dot product, instantly, instantly. Um, the other thing it can be used for is finding the angle between two vectors, okay? Um, and we'll do a quick example of that. But I, I want to just remind you of one, one of the quirks, right, or what makes the dot product so handy dandy, is if I have my axes here, and I have the y, really. I have my unit vector x and my unit vector y. When I do dot products, not x and y, come on. This is j, and that's i, okay. When I'm doing dot products, okay, um, anything in the i direction dot something in the j direction, Right? Well, they're 90 degrees apart. What's the cosine of 90 degrees? Zero. So anything, any i dot j equals zero, or i dot k or j dot k. If I have two components that I'm putting together in the same direction, i dot i, for example, that is equal to one, right? So as a result, when I have vectors in Cartesian coordinates, where, say, a equals a x uh, i plus a y j plus a z or z if you're not in the United States k 
B equals in the i, j, and k are vectors. A, x, or, oh man. B, x, i plus B, y, j plus B, z, k. Okay, when I do the dot product, if I was to multiply that out, there's like a million terms of all those things multiplied together. But all the i, j, and j, k, and j, i's, and those terms all go to zero. So in the end, all I'm left with, if I do a dot b, is simply a x b x plus a y b y plus a z b z. That's it. That's the dot product. It's very simple, okay? Um, so if I, and if I have vectors in Cartesian coordinates like that, I can manipulate them and do projections. It's very simple arithmetic. So let's, let's run to the promised example. I didn't even need two pages. Okay, here's the wrench. It's a Craftsman 3 8 drive wrench. I've got one almost identical. It's an older model. But I noticed this spring when I was down at the hangar, the, my, uh, that the ratchet part that had fallen out and is now lost. So now I've got a worthless ratchet. Uh, but that's beside the point. Okay, so I have this wrench, and I'm applying a force along this direction here in red, okay? And, I, you know, for finding an angle, I want to know what's the angle between the wrench and that in that direction that I'm applying the force. So it's this angle right there, right? What is that value of theta? Okay, so I can look at this, and if I look at the wrench, we'll call the wrench W, I see that the uh, vector that represents that wrench from, from the origin, and let me, well, I got too much red here. Let me do purple. So the, the vector that represents a wrench there, okay, is going to be 2.5i minus 15j, right, by inspection, okay? And my other, uh, my force is, is given in Cartesian notation, so that makes that easy. Um, so my dot product W dot F is equal to, now I got to be careful here, um, I want this angle right, right here, right? I just gave you the coordinates for a vector running in that direction, okay? And what we really want is the, the, um, the vector that runs this direction. Okay, to get, so I get this angle and not this angle. That's an easy mistake to make, at least if you're me. So let me change, so if I look at the, ang the, the vector from here to here, it's actually minus 2.5 and a plus 15, right? So let me fix that so we get the right angle. These are the kinds of things that can trip you up very easily. Okay, so I've got that W set. So I've got uh, minus 2.5 times, and I'll try to use an asterisk here or, because obviously a dot's going to get confused with a dot product and an X gets confused with a cross product. I'll try to be consistent here, but uh, yeah, six plus um, <laughs> consistency. That's my middle name, right? Um, 15 times six equals 75, and I know from my definition of the cross product, uh, W dot F equals W F cosine of theta, right? So I can rearrange that and say that theta equals inverse cosine of W dot F over the magnitudes W times F, where theta is between 0 and 180 degrees. So that's basically telling me that the that theta 
equals the inverse cosine of, and I, my dot product in the numerator was 75, um, magnitude of W, that's 2.5 squared uh, plus 15 squared, square root of that whole thing is, comes out to 15.2. Feel free to stop the recording and check my math. And the magnitude of F, 6 squared plus 6 squared, square root of the whole thing is 8.48. And that gives me an inverse cosine of 54.4 degrees. Okay? And again, be careful if you're getting degrees of radians. In this case, we did do degrees. And through most of this class, we're going to do degrees. Okay? So that's pretty simple. You know, I mean, uh, it's just simple, simple, simple. Okay? Okay. Um, so let's do another example. Same picture, but this time I want to know, I know the angle, and I guess I don't really care about the angle. When I'm spinning, spinning wrenches and uh, trying to bust the nut loose, what I really care about is how much force I'm applying along the perpendicular to that handle, right? That force right there, I don't care how much force I'm applying in that direction particularly, as long as it stays still. What I really care is how much force I'm, how, you know, how am I pulling on that, on that thing? So what I want to do is project, I'll repeat that, project F onto this vector pointing in this direction perpendicular to my handle, right? So I'm going to project to a vector, and do I care? I don't care about the magnitude of this vector itself. I'm going to project in that direction. So when I project in that direction, I project onto a unit vector, right? And when I project, I use the dot product project on the unit vector, u sub r. So I'm going to do the dot product to do the projection. I got it. Those, those two words in your head, you know, dot product and projection. I guess it's three words. Those need to just bing, 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 bing. You know, when you hear project, you say, yes, dot product. That's correct. Um, so I'm going to do f dot unit vector in the r direction, and I'm missing some, okay? And that projection will give me how much force I'm applying along that direction. So by inspection, you know, we, if we look at our position vector r, um, we, we can just see that r goes up two and a half centimeters and across 15 because it's just 90 degrees from the wrench, which we already know what that is. So I'm going to say R equals 15I plus 2.5J, okay? And I need a unit vector in that direction. Uh, we know the magnitude of that one from the previous page was 15.2, right? Check, 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 15.2, yep. So I'm going to say that my unit vector in the direction of R is 15 over 15.2 I plus 2.5 over 15 J. Oops. J goes there. And that is equal to 9.987 I plus 0.164 J. Okay. Now I can project my force using my dot product again. So F dot U sub R equals and F, we said, was 6I, 6J. So I've got 6 times 0 0.987 plus 6 times 0 
Uh, so the magnitude of, of this force along the R direction is equal to that projection, that dot product equals 6.91 in newtons, if we assume that this was in newtons before, okay? And originally, uh, that compares to our force before of 8.48. We got 6.91. That seems reasonable given the angles and given our geometry, okay? And that's all there is to it. It really is that simple. Uh, you know, I can give you a big 3D problem with, you know, all kinds of different ways of specifying the vectors, but we covered that in earlier videos, getting from position vectors to Cartesian coordinates to from slope vector, slope notation, and, you know, magnitude and angle notation. Uh, if we get the generally probably 90% of the problems we do in this class, you're just going to want to get all the vectors in Cartesian coordinates, and then you got the i's, j's, k's, and you just dot product, and later on cross product, add, subtract, divide, whatever. And it'll, the problems will just fall out. But the key is to get from where things are pointed to where you want them pointed, you know. And when you need to project, what do we use? Yeah, the dot product, okay? I say project, you say dot product, and I say that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.